Hello everybody, welcome to the county seat. We are uh, having a conversation today, downtown Salt Lake, uh, to uh, meet the schedule of our special guest, Senator Mike Lee, uh, who is also joined on our panel today by Leland Pollock, County Commissioner from Garfield County. The topic today is just what is happening and the impacts that have, are taking place in rural Utah. It's been a rugged eight months. Uh, since uh, the new administration came into office. It started right off the bat with moratoriums on energy leases and then a process of uh, selecting cabinet members who have an agenda that conflicts with a lot of the traditional uses in Utah on public lands. That leads us to where we are today on the uh, uh, precipice of a decision or a selection for the new director of the Bureau of Land Management. Tracy Stone Manning has been nominated by the administration and it has raised enough concerns that we thought we should take a half hour and share those concerns with you, the viewers at home. Senator Lee, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So um, how much history did you have of Tracy Stone Manning before the, her name came up in the, in the nomination process? You know, she, she wasn't someone who was on a lot of radar screens. She is someone who has a lot of history in this area, though, going all the way back to 1989, the year I graduated from high school, when she rented a typewriter from the University of Montana and typed out a threat note uh, announcing her intention to participate in a plan to spike trees. We're talking about hundreds of tree spikes that were put in place in these trees that had already been auctioned off for harvesting. Now, tree spikes are known to maim and in some cases to kill those who are harvesting trees. Now, remember, these are duly authorized, approved lumber sales that had been auctioned off and been deemed safe and, and, and compatible with multiple use and environmental interests at stake, she still wanted to spike them. Uh, this is an act of eco-terrorism. She participated in it as a co-conspirator, and she's not someone who should head the Bureau of Land Management. But, you know, th this is interesting because I reviewed her presentation uh, to the committee uh, as she was uh, going through the screening process, and um, I noticed that she made no association with this organization at all. She starts, I mean, her early career is doing a land trust, and she follows her path through, uh, through um, Montana government, but she never, she never mentions her uh, connection with Earth First. Nor did she mention the fact that she had been criminally investigated for her role in this issue, even though she was asked specifically whether she had been, when in fact she had. She wasn't prosecuted in the end because she turned state's evidence. She ended up cooperating with prosecutors and gave them useful information. It's very, very likely that she would have been charged had she not done that, and that's one of the many reasons why her failure to disclose it was unfortunate, but her participation in it itself reveals that she's not someone who should head this agency. Look, there are lots of people, uh, separate and apart from the uh, ideologies that are inherent in the two political parties, um, there are a lot of people out there who otherwise might have been nominated for this who don't have a record of criminal conspiracies involving acts of eco-terrorism. They didn't have to choose her. She should not have this role. Okay. When, when you look at this from your perspective, Leland, you, you are in a county that relies on, on, on two things, or has traditionally, and you, you've had your hands tied both on cattle allotments and on uh, forestry. Those are two big traditional uh, revenue generators for Garfield County. Uh, what does a nomination like this bring to you? Brings a lot of problems, a lot of feelings, a lot of heartburn, heartache for those, those uh, timber Industry, industry workers. I remember when this was the tree spiking was going on. And I've been on your show a lot of times. I've told you these tree huggers are eco terrorists. Well, now we've got an eco terrorist that's been nominated to be the national director of the BLM. So, for my county, largest forest county in the state of Utah, largest, mm -hmm. we have an eco terrorist that spiked trees that's being nominated to be the national director of the Bureau of Land Management. Another problem that we have with this, <clears throat> the, the Bureau of Land Management was created by the Taylor Grazing Act to manage grazing. She is very anti-grazing. She has come out, she's put it on the record, she's wrote literature about how anti-grazing she is. She stated on many occasions that the number one environmental threat 
to Western lands. Western public lands is public land grazing, grazing on public lands, okay? And, and this lady, they put her in charge of the, the, the Bureau of Land Management that was created to manage grazing. So we know what we're going to get with Tracy Stone Manning. Here's another problem. This person, um, there was a letter written by the former national director of BLM, Bob Abbey. You probably remember Bob Abbey. Okay, under the Obama, this guy's a Democrat. Yeah, I, underst I understand. He worked for Obama. Mm -hmm. He writes a letter to your committee. He writes a letter to the, the, the President of the United States saying, please do not do this. This is a good agency. This will destroy this agency. Please don't nominate her. Okay, that's one. Uh, when Neil Cornsey was the national director of the BLM, I knew him very well. He had a deputy by the name of Steve Ellis, deputy director. He also writes a letter. He's a Democrat. He worked for Obama. And he writes a letter saying the same thing. Please do not do this to these good agency people. And at the end of the day, when you break this thing down, not only are the people on the ground going to have to suffer, but all of those good range cons, all of those good Bureau of Land Management uh, employees that want to do range improvement projects, that work, that's worked with me personally to do range improvement projects, they're going to be damaged by this as well. So, I don't know, what do we need, just one Democrat? Just one, that's one. Just. All we need is one Democrat to join with us and say, no, this is not how we run things. Look, you don't hire an arsonist with a history of pyromania to be your fire chief. We shouldn't hire an eco-terrorist to head the BLM. You know, there'll be some people watching the show, Senator, Commissioner, that will say eco-terrorist is kind of a strong accusation uh, to make for somebody. It is. It's a strong accusation, and it's warranted here. Tree spiking kills, it maims. It's got a history of killing and maiming. This was well known at the time. She wrote this letter in 1989. Tree spiking had, just over the last few years leading up to that, become a known tool for eco-terrorists. She knew what she was doing. She knew what that group was plotting, and yet she participated in it as a co-conspirator. And yet her argument would be, well, I didn't spike the trees. I just wrote the letter for them to warn the, the Forest Service. I in, believe that's her take. When, when charged with robbing a bank as an accessory or co-conspirator uh, co to commit bank robbery is not a defense saying, I didn't personally uh, hold the weapon and write the note demanding all the money in the bank. I just drove the car and plotted how many minutes it would take and then drove the getaway car away from the scene. A co-conspirator still is responsible for the object of the conspiracy. Another thing to add to that, you've got a former USD, USDA uh, detective that basically had to retire in 1997 because of death th threats and a contract put out on his life by Earth First. How do we know that? Because he wrote a letter also, the detective, and said, look, this lady was not an innocent bystander. In fact, she was probably, it was on Fox News, Any, news anybody can read this. Um, I read it on Fox News. This lady was one of the nastiest ones of the bunch. She was a ringleader. Now, back to eco-terrorism. Earth First is an eco-terrorist organization. That was their M.O. back then and still is to this day. So it's not, we're not using any new words here. They've always been an eco-terrorism group. Why do you think she rented the typewriter? Well, she rented the typewriter because that's what one does when one wants to type something that doesn't, uh, first of all, by typing it, you make sure that your own handwriting can't be used as evidence against you to identify the author. If you own the typewriter in question, um, it, distinct features and characteristics from that typewriter can sometimes be traced back to you. So very often that's what one does if one wants to conceal what one is communicating uh, is go and rent a typewriter or borrow a typewriter from someone else and do it in a way that you, you hope doesn't result in anyone figuring out that it was you. So what do you think the impact is going to be from this? I mean literally going forward if if she is uh, cleared and passes on the vote to become the BLM director, what do you think will policy change? It seems to me the BLM changes policy rather slowly when, when 
Trump, when Trump was put in, it just it didn't seem like things shifted. When George W. Bush was in, it didn't seem like it made much difference uh, who was at the top. It seemed like the agency just kind of moved along its path. Some of what you describe in terms of uh, the, the slow pace of policy change is certainly true, uh, at least when you think of capital P policy change. But there are countless instances in which the BLM director has to make day-to-day -day operational decisions that end up having huge consequences. For everything from hiring to instances in which the BLM director is specifically statutorily tasked with exercising a degree of discretion over this or that. So uh, let's, let's not pretend that her impact will be anything other than enormous. If someone wants to come in and revolutionize America, the same kind of person who would want to engage in an act of eco-terrorism in order to carry out radical leftist uh, environmental strategy, uh, she's going to leave a big impact. But I can tell you this, if she is confirmed, which she should not be, there's going to be an inherent distrust from day one from people who realize what her background is. Well, this is, uh, you know, we've got our constituents that are going to be on the receiving end of this. I mean, energy, logging, ranching, and those are our big uses. Recreation. Add, add, well, okay, we can add recreation. <laughs> we, we can add recreation to it. Uh, but, you, you know, BLM doesn't own all the public land. They own a portion of it. Um, you know, is this impact is this impact going to be that severe and that quick? I mean, USDA has got the forests, and they're not sure. they're not in that department. They're not even in that agency. Sure, but the Bureau of Land Management uh, specifically manages forty percent of all the land mass in the state of Utah. Uh, that is an enormous amount of land and an enormous amount of discretion that she will have in ways that will impact it very directly the day-to-day -day lives of Utahns from many walks of life. Everything from grazing uh, to recreation, uh, land access, ingre ingress, egress, uh, to say nothing of uh, all the other activities that she will be supervising in one way or another. Chad, let me say this. Mm -hmm. It happens fast. Trust me, it happens fast. The second year of the Obama administration, I call it the Obama nightmare on public lands. It was a daily fight. It really was for uh, government elected officials to try to, to save these lands from being locked up. But do you remember Executive Order 3310? Yeah. That came in in the second year. Wilderness without congressional authority. That was an executive order by Bob Abbey and the administration. And this is one of the guys that says she shouldn't be in. And this is one of the guys. So that's how fast that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, 3310, you, you Senator, and, and I want to thank this guy because he's really standing up on this, and uh, he, he's got our back out here on this. I want to make that clear. But you also helped with that. That was, uh, that was something that would have devastated Bureau of Land Management lands. It was agencies could go in and create wilderness without Congress. That's what executive order, we shut it down, we fought back, we pushed back, all of the West pushed back. Isn't that part of what swept you in? It, that was the time you were just coming into office, wasn't I, it? I, I believe that one actually was issued shortly after I got elected to office. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, you know, it had the potential to impact a, a huge swath of things. Uh, you know, oil and gas leasing, uh, mineral exploration and development, grazing, recreation, you name it. The whole idea, as Commissioner Pollock said, was to uh, allow them uh, basically as a matter of discretion, executive discretion, to take huge sections of land and take them outside of multiple use. It was like, didn't they call it a wildlands designation? Anything that looked uh, like it should be protected, that's all the criteria there were, that there was put on it at the time. So any, any agency, and they had all their people in place, these national directors, state directors, agency folks, if they wanted to identify wilderness, and it was your cattle allotment was in that, or your oil, or whatever, if there were roads in that, 
They were they would have been able to go out and do that. Rob Bishop, uh, he worked hard on that as well. It was several of us, lots of commissioners, um, lots of states really took that on and stopped it. But this is what we're going to be faced with. Okay. I would like to take a quick break here uh, for, for a commercial break. We're going to come back, and I want to pick up this conversation of, of trying to paint for our viewers and, and the people that are your constituents what this might look like on the ground, you know, what, what you might see happening. Uh, we've sounded the alarm about who is about ready to be put in charge of the hen house. Uh, what kind of eggs are they going to lay? We'll be right back on the county seat. The county seat as we know it is coming to an end. Our last television broadcast will be September 26th and 27th. Be sure to tune in. The last episodes are full of fire and information. But the county seat will continue. We are going underground. We will be talking very directly, very frankly, about the problems that affect local government and your life as a citizen of the United States of America. We will have interesting guests, in-depth dialogue, and very little commercial. Join us for County Seat Underground. You can get to it through our website, www.thecountyseat.tv, and it will be available in all kinds of streaming broadcasts. It all starts right now, the County Seat Underground. Check it out. It's over. You still here? We're done. See you underground. Hey everyone. Have you ever wondered if the beef that we feature on AYL is as good as we say? Well, why don't you try one of our delicious sample boxes from butter-steaks.com. They are absolutely delicious and they're tender and juicy. Delivered directly from the ranch right to your door from butter-steaks.com. If you're gonna eat grass-fed beef, put the very best on your table. Yardley's Premium Beef from butter-steaks.com. You ready to eat, kids? Yeah! I got to ramble in Beaver County, Utah. Where I rode a trail under the big blue skies and didn't see anyone else. Where I cooled off in a stream, which made me and my mom and grandma laugh so hard. This is Ramblers. It's always been Utah. Ramble responsibly for future generations, like me. Welcome back to the county seat. We're having a conversation with Senator Mike Lee and a commissioner from rural Utah, Leland Pollock, Garfield County, about uh, the impending or potential nomination of uh, Stone Manning to the, uh, the head of the BLM and what kind of problems there are with this candidate. We've kind of covered that part of the conversation. I would like to spend just a little bit of time talking about what this would actually look like on the ground. What you project are the kinds of things that this administration would push forward with that kind of uh, uh, eco-leaning leadership. Got any ideas? Yeah, uh, one of the first things that comes to mind is roads. RS-2477 roads crisscrossing the western United States, any areas where there's a lot of federal land, uh, as long as those federal lands have been around for a long time, there's a good chance you've got roads crossing through them, owned jointly by the county and state in question, uh, uh, under uh, an, a Civil War era statute called RS-2477. When the Bureau of Land Management refuses to recognize the legitimacy of road right-of-ways, rights-of-way, uh, you end up creating a huge problem. Farmers and ranchers can't get to their property. They can't get to and from work. It's one of countless examples where there's a lot of discretion there. If they decide to close roads and refuse to acknowledge their legitimacy, that's going to lock up the land. But aren't we already almost at the end zone with that in court? I mean, we've got bellwether cases that we're waiting for a decision sure. on, and that and wouldn't that change? Wouldn't that just be a yield sign for them to give up after it? When court victories occur, and when we when we win in court, it's a fantastic thing, and, and that's why I'm wholeheartedly behind the effort to litigate those cases. But remember, uh, there are thousands of them out there. And it's, it's costly, it's time-consuming to litigate any one of them. So for every one of those victories, 
There are thousands of others that have yet to be litigated. But one would logically figure that if if the case, the bellwether cases and the and the thousand roads that are already up or hundreds of roads that are already up all fall under the same uh, precedent of, of jurisprudence, wouldn't that mean that there would be no point in in choosing to fight and litigate the further ones down the road? It would and it should. Under the leadership of Tracy Stone Manning, it won't. And the reason is she's going to do everything she can to lock people out of federal land as much as she possibly can. That's what an eco-terrorist does, and that's what someone with a radical leftist environmental agenda will do if she's installed in this position. What are your, th what are your thoughts and concerns, Leland? I mean, you're a rancher. Well, and yeah, yeah, but everybody in southern Utah, rural Utah, knows what the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance has done to us. Everybody knows what the Friends of the Dixie did. It, they shut down the sawmills. And by the way, why are we having these catastrophic fires? It's not climate change. It's eco-terrorists that shut down the sawmills, that stopped thinning the forest, that stopped, when they stopped managing the forest, it created a huge fuel load. That's why you're seeing these catastrophic fires. So my thought is this, you know, and our governor, all the way from the governor down to the everyday citizen, and not just in Utah, we've got to push back on this. We've got to draw a line in the sand. These types of people have basically been attacking us on public lands most of my life. It started with Robert Redford when he shut down the uh, Kaparowitz Coal Project in the 70s. I mean, we have fought this over and over and over. And to think now that the Bureau of Land Management will be run by an eco-terrorist is unconscionable. I can't even imagine that in my wildest dream. What kind of a president, what kind of a person is Joe Biden to do that to us? And he did it. He nominated her, right? He did. So what will and that he won't back off? Well, what will that look like uh, in ranching? What What do you envision? I, I mean, Senator Lee gave us a, a, a very good uh, picture of of roads, recreation, and access. What do you think that will do to grazing allotments and allocations? A wonderful question. Already, it's starting. One thing I do. I'm the real conservationist. Us, we. We are the real, we care about the environment. I'm involved in conservation projects constantly. What are they? They're recovery projects, watershed recovery, range improvement, water projects that give wildlife water out on the range, cattle, uh, those types of projects. I'm involved in that heavily with the Bureau of Land Management. Already, already, that's been frozen. They don't do, dare do anything right now. And she's not even been uh, appointed yet officially, right? I mean, right. we've still got time to get rid of her. So already, so what does that do? If you cannot improve what, you know, it goes back to what the BLM was created for, multiple use and sustained yield, okay? The BLM was to manage the land and do range improvement projects. If you can't improve the, the, the range, if you can't make the land healthy, then you're going to starve the cattle out anyway, and, that, and that's by design. So who is really the, the true conservation, uh, conservationist? So how does, Mother, us. how does Mother Nature do it? Because that is exactly what they would say. So we should, we should just pull out and let Mother Nature take her course. Yeah, yeah. let me tell you what that looks like. What okay. that looks like is environmental disaster. What that looks like are wildfires that are catastrophic for flora, for fauna, for human life, and for the environment generally. This destroys watersheds, it destroys economies, and it destroys beautiful things in nature that we lose when we don't manage them. Look, uh, when, when you do this stuff responsibly, it can make sure that there are breaks in uh, areas where there's excessive fuel built up in a forest, uh, in any area where there's a lot of trees, where there's a lot of growth. If you manage it correctly, you can avoid a lot of those catast catastrophes. Now, and that's what's ironic about this, is that in the name of environmental activism, they're bringing about things that are environmentally catastrophic. We can't let that happen. Do you have any numbers on what the air quality is like in the West right now? I mean, speaking, this has been a year of catastrophic fires, and our air quality has suffered from things happening two states away. Let me just say something as well. In my lifetime, 
I can remember beautiful forests. When we had sawmills, when we had active forest management, that's where they go out and they make the forest healthy before the bark beetle kills, before all of this mess, by not being able, just exactly what the senator said, by not being able to manage the land. We have to manage it. Look what the catastrophic fires have done. And air quality, you, you don't even need to, to know what it is. You look at it on the news in California, how can you breathe in that? So that answers that question. Here is another problem as far as the range goes. Uh, you go back to the, the Watershed Restoration Initiative. Utah runs that. Done, been very successful on BLM lands. Taken out a lot of pinion and juniper that has encroached on rangelands. And it won't burn. It's not like the, the forest trees. So how do you get rid of it? You have to go in there and you have to do recovery projects, bull hogging, those types of things, and then you reseed it. We've done several around Panguage. With the last rains that we've got, it is beautiful rangeland. I mean, it's just beautiful. But, but, but you have to be able to do that. We will not be able to do that with Tracy Stone Mining. There, but then again, going back to the forest, there is the argument that there's not that much of the forest that is commercially harvestable and that a lot of the steep terrain, uh, dense growth is Absolutely is just... false. Okay. Let me tell Explain you Explain that to me. Okay, you've got how many, you know, a pallet, a wood pallet. Mm -hmm. Okay, where does that come from? Junk wood. Chips for Walmart, where does that come from? It comes from the chips from the junk wood. There is a tremendous market for that type of wood right now. But who has, who's in charge of that? They have to do the NEPA. They cannot go out and, and get this, this business fired up. We have a couple of them right now in Garfield County. We have logs coming off as we speak in Garfield County, be, thanks to the, the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. Because there is an industry out there. So, okay, so we have a couple. We've we've burned through an, no pun intended. We've burned through an entire half hour here. We've got a couple of minutes left. What do people need to do? We've gotten a message out. There, there's a point to be made for all of this. What do we need to do? Anyone who has any platform at all in which others will listen to them. Encourage people they know, particularly in states represented by Democratic senators, to reach out to those senators and encourage them. Please don't confirm her. There are plenty of other people out there, plenty of other Democrats out there, who are not eco-terrorists. We do not need an eco-terrorist as the director of the BLM. Okay, so if you've got relatives or friends in other states, you need to make a case for them, you need to speak up? Is that what you're saying? Speak up. Speak up specifically to Democratic senators because they're all planning to vote for her right now. We need them to not vote for her. One vote will do it. Nevada, I think it's 87% federal land. Arizona has a lot of federal land. So when people see this program, they can go pick up our YouTube. You can share it uh, with your friends in other states because it'll be on YouTube. It could be seen anywhere in the country. Uh, the advice of these gentlemen is to do that. And uh, we are running out of time on the county seat. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you, Thank you Leland, for driving four and a half hours to get up here <laughs> for this conversation. It's been well worth it. I think it's been very enlightening. Remember, local government is where your life occurs. Be involved, be engaged, and we'll see you next week on the county seat. We'll talk about this a little bit more. <laughs>